All right, what's up everyone? Dave here, and I'm gonna show you Maya versus Blender, and this is UV mapping. So in Maya, I'm gonna kinda of show a UV mapping workflow, um, and then I'm gonna show an, also a UV mapping workflow in Blender, and everything that I'm gonna be doing in Blender is going to be absolutely free. Um, I do use some add-ons that I'm gonna suggest, but again, those add-ons are free. So then you can kind of compare the two, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna kinda of talk about maybe which method I prefer. So let's get right into it. So here is Maya. I'll start by UV mapping this cat in Maya. And before I even begin, let's kind of talk about what UV mapping is. So if I go here, if I go to UV map, I can see that this cat um, is laid flat. Okay, so why would we want to do that? So I take this three-dimensional object and lay it flat. Well, I feel like, let's say if I'm doing um, textures, I kind of want to lay it flat to make it like a coloring book. So let's say I, I could figure out where to paint the stripes and that kind of thing. Okay, now of course there's advanced programs that allow us to paint three-dimensionally on the model itself, but I feel like um, would they still need it to be laid flat now? And if I turn on the checker, I can see that if the checker is readable throughout the model, um, that's a good sign that it's going to work in any texturing software. Okay, so that's kind of the example of the finished product here. But let's take a look at the starting point. So I'll maybe delete this cat. And I'm gonna go over to this one here. And let's say if you're modeling, it might look kind of weird like this, and I can see that the checkers are not good. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn off the checkers right now. And just to kind of get set up in Maya here, what I can do is I can go over to um, UV, UV Editor, and the UV Editor pops up along with the UV Toolkit. And um, now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of set that there. Now one thing with Maya, if I zoom out, I can see that it has all these squares, and the only square that I'm gonna care about is this quadrant right here, okay? I can see that currently it's just kind of like this. I'm going to right click and hold, go to UV shell, and I'm gonna move this off to the side, okay? And now I said, hey, let's keep everything in here. Well, the reason that I moved it over here is because I consider this the junk pile. I'm gonna kind of cut this up and move everything that is good over here. So to get this going, I'm gonna do a few things. I'm going to go up here in um, my menu I'm gonna make sure that object symmetry, object X is turned on. That way, if I select something on this side, it's gonna select it on the mirrored side. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. Um, I also wanna make sure that if I want the UV layout, UV editor, that I'm in the modeling menu set. You can see that I can switch it here. If I switch this, notice that my menus change at the top here. So I'm gonna be in the modeling menu set. That's where I'm gonna get my UV map. Um, and now, let's start cutting this thing up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on an edge and that's gonna select it all the way around. And now I can go to cut and I can go to cut. Now I can right click, go to UV shell and I can't select the UV shells because I have object X on. So maybe what I'll do is I'll do my cuts first and then I'll kinda of turn off object X and then move them around. So now I'm gonna cut off the head. And if I need to continue I'm gonna hold down shift, double click, whoop, shift, click, and now it continued that all the way around. And I'm gonna go here to cut and cut, and you can see that the uh, shortcut is shift X to cut. Um, and now I just cut off the head, okay? And if I want to cut off the legs, I'm gonna double click, and it's gonna stop when it has to make a decision. You can see that it doesn't know if it wants to go this way, this way, or that way. So I'm gonna shift click, shift click. And again, it's coming to a lot of decisions. So I feel like I might have to kind of help it around here. And there we go. And I can see that it's on both sides. I could do shift X, cause that's cut and there we go. Um, I'll continue this. Shift double click, shift double click, shift double click, shift double click, shift X is going to cut that. Um, the other thing too is over here, if I have this on, it's going to show me where my cuts are. And again, if I want to make sure that I cut there, now I can see that it's cut there. Uh, so that's kind of nice. It highlights where my seams are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut off these back legs. 
shift double click shift double click and I'm gonna come around here there we go all the way around yes excellent and now I'm gonna to go to cut and then I'm also gonna cut off the bottom of the feet now you might be saying well hey how are you determining where to cut and I feel like with experience with UV mapping uh, it'll become easier to determine kind of where to cut, but I feel like this isn't necessarily a uh, strategic UV mapping thing. It's more about a comparison between Blender and Maya. So the more you do this, uh, the more intuitive it'll become where to cut. Um, so now I need to just cut some more here. So I'm going to go from here to here, shift, double click, and I'm making sure that it gets to one edge all the way to the other edge cut and then if I go again click here shift double click and cut I think I have all my cuts so now if I go to UV shell if I select this I can go to modify unfold and it's going to unfold all the pieces and then if I go to modify layout it's going to lay them all out in this quadrant and if I want to see how I did I can go here and turn on the checkers and I can see that the checkers actually look pretty good um, and if there's, if this is highlighted, you can see that if I, if I take a shell, so if I right click, go to UV shell, and that's when I'm going to turn this off. Now I can grab a shell, whoop, an individual shell and move it. I can see that if it goes, if the checker shows on any of these other ones, uh, might mean that it's overlapping even by a pixel. So I might want to grab all of these and just scale down slightly. So to scale down, I just selected R, or the scale and now I can bring it down and there it is so um, now I could manually move these around right click go to UV shell and then use my move rotate or scale to position these but I feel like I'm just gonna leave it like that um, a few other things here I could turn off the picture so I can see this a little bit better and then I can click on this uh, this is gonna indicate if the shells are flipped backwards uh, they would be red if they were flipped upside down and they're going to be blue if they're facing the right way and did you see that if I go to modify flip I can see that that's what they would look like if they were backwards okay so um, this is kind of UV mapping 101 for Maya so let's see how that process looks in blender so let's take a look at UV mapping in blender you'll notice a lot of similarities but also some differences so I can see here that I'm in the normal layout tab and they have it already kind of organized up here for us so I'm going to go to UV editing and I can see that it's right there now if this is in object mode I can see that I'm not going to see the cat here it has to be in what's called edit mode and I could press um, tab to enter edit mode or I can go here to to do that um, by the way I do need the object selected to be able to kind of tab back and forth between object and edit mode. Okay, great. So um, again, I'm gonna be in edit mode. I can also tell it's edit mode because of the long menu here. Now, once I have that, um, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this model up exactly like I did in Maya. So to do that, um, it's cool because I'm in the UV editing, all of my menus are just gonna be relevant for what I need. So if I go to UV, mark seam is what they call it. So instead of continually going back to that, if I right click, I can say add to quick favorites. I'm also going to be using unwrap, so I'm going to right click and add to quick favorites. I'm also going to go to mesh, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to select, and I'm going to select mirror, and you'll see that in a second, I'm going to right click add to quick favorites. Well, what does that mean? That means if I press Q, those are my things that I just added to my quick favorites, mark seam, unwrap, and select mirror. Okay, great. Now up here, this is going to be vertex, edge, and face. So one, two, and three are my shortcuts for that. So I want to be in edge mode. And if I hold down Alt, and if I click on an edge, it's going to select it all the way around. Now to cut that, I'm going to go to Q and mark seam. And now I can see that it's cut. If I cut off the head, I'm going to do Alt, click. And to continue this, I'm going to do Shift, Alt to continue that all the way around. Okay, great. Now if I press Q, mark seam, there I cut the head. Now notice I'm not seeing it here. I would have to uh, have this selected to see it. So I'm not really worried about that right now. I'm going to go like this. I'm just going to 
Alt, and then Alt Shift, and click this all the way around. And here I've got to be a little bit careful on this that I really do select it all the way around. And I'm going to go to Q, Mark Scene. And then to get it on the other side, I could go like this, and I could say Select Mirror, Q, Mark Scene. Awesome. Now, to see if I did that right, I can click on this, the wireframe, and I can see, ah, yes, I did cut it all the way around. So now I could come over here. Again, Alt, click, Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, and keep doing Shift, Alt to click all the way around. Q, Mark Seam, uh, Q, Select Mirror, Q, Mark Seam, and now I'm going to cut off the bottom of the feet. Alt, and then Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, and then Q, Mark Seam, Q, Select Mirror, Q, Mark Seam. I'm going to do the same over here. Alt, then Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, Shift, Alt, and if it was faster, I could just do it like this. I don't have to um, mirror it. And then I'm going to go to Mark Seam. Okay, awesome. Now, to select from here to here, I'm just going to go like this and press Control, and then I can click on that, and it's going to go from end to end. Q, Mark Seam. Over here, Control, and then Q, Mark Seam. And I guess I could have uh, done the mirror as well there. So here, Control, click, and then Q, Mark Seam. And then if I, I could do Select Mirror, Q, Mark Seam, and now it should be on that side. Excellent. Okay, great. So now if I want to look at this, I can look at it in wireframe mode and I can see where my cuts are. Uh, oh, and I can see that I forgot a cut right here. So now I can select those. Whoa. Select that and that. Whoa. And now I could go Q, Mark Seam. Okay, so good thing I kind of looked at it in, in wireframe mode. But the other thing that I want to point out is that if I want to get it over here, remember we have to select the faces. And if I go into the shaded mode, and if I drag select over this, notice that it looks like it's missing. And that's because it's only selecting the faces that we can see um, because it was in shaded mode. So if I go into wireframe mode, technically we can see all the faces because it's clear and now it considers that. And so now I can select the whole thing. So now when it's all selected, I can press Q and then unwrap. And now I can see that it's laid out like that. And if I want to evaluate this, now I could, um, I could go here, select this all, and then I could change it to one of these modes. Um, and I'm going to change it to the third one here. This is going to be my viewport shading so I can see the textures. And now I feel like I want to kind of evaluate how I did here. And by the way, I can go over here and I can grab like this one, and that's going to allow me to select an individual shell. And I could just press G for grab, and I can move it around. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it how it laid it out. But um, if I click on this little arrow up here, it's, it's going to bring out kind of a, a menu here. And if you were doing this by default, you're not going to see all the menus that I have here. These are some of the add-ons that I have added or plugins. So Blender is really heavy on plugins. So I'm going to add the what's called text tool 144. Okay. Now, and you'll see what this is in just a second. But to add it, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go to Edit Preferences. Then here, I'm going to go to Add-ons, Install, and I'm going to go to my desktop, and then I'm going to find the zipped file. I don't even have to unzip it. I'm just going to grab Text Tools 144, click Install Add-on. Once that's added, I can go here and I can just say uh, Text. Ah, there it is, Text Tools. If I check that, it's going to show that, and if I open this up, it'll kind of tell me if there's a hotkey or anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it alone. And now if I open this up, I can see here's text tools. And this is going to be really cool. And I can see here's UV layout, so it's going to give us kind of additional kind of functionality here. Again, this is a free plugin, but I think it's definitely worth it. Okay, now if we look at this, what can I do with this? Well, right away I can click on checker map. And if I click on that, I can see that, hey, this is cool. I can see the checkers, so I can kind of evaluate how I did. Uh, you'll notice the checkers are kind of big. That's okay. I can come in here and I can change the size. So let's say if it was, um, if I want 1024, now I can go here and um, go into resize, just click OK, and I can see that it's smaller checkers. Okay, so it's kind of easier to evaluate. Or I could make them even smaller yet. Or 
I could do this. I could just click on checker map again, and you can see that it switches the type of checker map that it's doing. So with the letters, it's cool because I can tell if my shells are flipped or not. In other words, if the E was backwards or the numbers were backwards, I'd be able to tell. If I click on checker map again, now I can see the directionality of my shells. Okay, so if this was like something like maybe that had wood grain, uh, it might make a difference on the angle that I had these. And you can see that if I select a shell here, and then if I press um, R for rotate, you can see that I can start rotating it. And um, I could kind of adjust it, but I can see the visual right here. And if I click checker map again, it's gonna go off, but I can toggle through all of these. Okay, so really cool. Um, now, could you make these maps and in, um, kind of import them into Maya? Absolutely. But I feel like the fact that it's already here just makes it super fast. Um, another cool free plugin is Magic UV. And here, let's say if you didn't like how it laid it out, um, if on UV man, uh, manipulation, Pack UV makes it so it like kind of stacks it, or not stacks it, but just kind of like fills in any gaps and kind of really takes advantage of that um, of that space. So you get a really optimized layout, which is pretty cool. So I feel like um, uh, it looks like we've got a great uh, UV map here. And I feel like, I so I UV mapped in Maya, I UV mapped in Blender. Now kind of talking about which one do I prefer? Well, I think when it comes to uh, selection, I feel like they're both kind of equally fast in selecting. I think that if I wasn't using the plugins, I think that Maya would be my favorite. Um, I think Maya would edge it out just slightly, but I feel like with the plugin, I, I just love how fast I can kind of swap between the different uh, textures. And I feel like with using the text tool plugin specifically, I think that I actually prefer UV mapping in Blender over Maya, I think it edges it out a little bit. I think that it's just, there's a lot of things that make a lot of sense in there. Um, but again, one thing that I found is that if you do have problems, I feel like sometimes Maya's um, unfolding method works a little bit better. So in, in other words, if you have um, something that is giving you problems, I feel like it's kind of harder to troubleshoot that in Blender. Still that being said, I think what I would recommend is, hey, let's, um, UV map in Blender, let's do that. I think it's fast, it's efficient, there's free add-ons that I would recommend. But if you find yourself having problems, maybe then import that into Maya and then kind of like take it to the finish line if necessary, if there's some complexity going on or so. But I don't really anticipate that being a problem. I think you'd be fine in Blender. So this one, I'm gonna give thumbs up to Blender. All right, so if you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, share with others, um, and look out for more Maya versus Blender tutorials in the future. All right, have a great day. Thank you.